Hi guys, good day and hope you're well. So we discussed until now all the chapters that we discussed, all the lectures that we had. So we discussed different mechanisms. And we also discussed different hydrocarbons. So in this chapter, we'll try to coalesce everything and try to come out as and talk about synthesis of compounds. So the chapter deals with the main objective here is how do you synthesize an organic compound. So this is the main question that we're going to answer in this chapter today. So if you look at a synthesis problem, the main question that we have is to understand what are the reagents that we need. If you have a single reaction, for example, let's say we have two propane, propene, and you want to pour, you want to produce one comma two dibromopropane. So then we know that here we need bromine Br2. So in this compound reduction here in the process that we are producing, we know that we need Br2. The question comes back that how do you synthesize this compound? So to understand how to synthesize this, we must master all the reactions that are generally possible in an organic reaction. And we also need to know all the reagents that are required before tackling the multi-step synthesis problems. So it is critical to work throughout before uh, Every before the work through everything that we discussed before this before we go through the next parts so pause the video right here go through the summaries of all the chapters before this and try to compare come back to this chapter now so let's talk about the first one which is functional group transformations so it is logical to review the two steps in this strategies so from the last previous chapters that we discussed so Whenever we are moving a functional group from one carbon to the next, so here the functional group we are choosing is bromine. So the final compound is this one. So I am moving this bromine from here, this carbon, to, from this carbon to here. Now this brings up the question: How do I do that? I cannot do it in a one-step process. So the first thing that I'll do is the undergo it undergoes an elimination reaction that eliminates the. So that eliminates the bromine. Next, I will have to do addition. So here we need to obtain a Zaisev alkene, meaning that we have to obtain a more substituted alkene in the first step. So remember that part. Next, so to obtain Zaisev alkene, we need to choose a strong base. So if you use a weak base, we get Hoffman product. If we use a strong base, we get a Zyzev product. So the second step is addition. Here notice that these are the two carbons that are there. Now the two carbons are being added. So the carbon here is being added with a hydrogen and the carbon here is being added with a bromine. So we know that it's a HBr addition. But we want to know whether it is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. So it says that Markovnikov is that here the less substituted carbon should get hydrogen, the more substituted carbon should get bromine. So here it matches the sign. So this is a Markovnikov addition. So just in this reaction, we discussed two main processes. One, we discussed the process of elimination, especially referring to the Zaisev elimination. We also discussed addition. In this we discussed hydrobromination, especially in, in, in Markovnikov addition. So that is why it is important that you review the chapters before this, before we come back to this chapter. Next. So these functional group transformations we can lay out all the reactions we know where alkyl bromides and alkenes are concerned and then choose the reagents that are needed to yield the correct regiochemistry. 
here regio chemistry refers to either markovnikov or anti markovnikov as an example or it can also relate to uh, elimination so it can also refer to whether it's a zyze product or you get a hoffman product so in the first reaction that we saw if we use a strong base we get the zyze product but if we use a weak base so this is a simple base so which is generally a stronger one so we get a zyze product here we use a complex base so which is generally a weak one which gives us a hoffman product now using the zyze product next if you do hbr addition there are two ways you can do one is markovnikov addition the other is anti markovnikov addition so markovnikov addition there is no peroxides here we use peroxides so that's the difference between the two reactions that we just saw so we can lay out all of this so if you want to do the back reaction from zyzeva product back to the product we can use an anti markovnikov addition notice that you can get back the same product back again so this is one way the other way is getting back 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 part again next let's say here if you are using a compound like this here we want to transform the functional group from one carbon to the other carbon so let me write it down separately so this is the oh group now our idea for the final product is to convert this into this so we want to move the final product to the other side so this is the final product that we are looking for so how do you do this process so the first thing to remember is that this has to first undergo oh here is not a good leaving group so we will have to convert it into an alkyl halide so the first step here involves converting this compound into an alkyl halide so here the alkyl halide refers to let's say for example chlorine so chlorine becomes so here is a good leaving group so this process is simply substitution so we need to do a substitution process now this substitution is is going to refer to so we're going to use tsel and pyridine so once we have done this now the next one is used to is to use this compound the alkyl halide and then produce this to form an alkene so here we are going to need a zyze product because notice that oh here is on the other side so we are going to use to we are going to end up doing elimination next so in the elimination process you are going to end up with the chlorine moving out and one of the hydrogens going out so this results in a double bond formation so you are going to end up with so a zyze product Now this elimination requires removal of chlorine and this elimination is to take place so that 
it forms a Zyser product so we need a strong base so the strong base here we're gonna use is NaOET so remember that we're gonna use a simple base which means it's a strong base now once we get this we're gonna have to put OH on that so here in the next process we already have a Zyser We have a Zyzev alkene. In the next process, we are going to have to do addition. But here the final product requires hydrogen and OH being added. So we can think about the process here as the process of acid catalyzed hydration. So which means here we are going to use H3O+. Right. So we're going to end up with H3O plus. Now the final product will be OH. So this is how you get the final product. So here notice that acid catalyzed dehydration hydration results in a Markovnikov addition of hydrogen and OH. So which means that here there are two carbons this is one carbon this is the second carbon this is the less substituted carbon this is the more substituted carbon so the idea of markovnikov addition is that the less carbon less substituted gets hydrogen and the more substituted gets oh so this is the synthesis reaction now you can summarize the full compound like this Now, so here in this process, we have reagents. Number one is TSCl and pyridine. Number two is elimination. So here elimination occurs with HPR. So elimination occurs with a weak base. We use NOET in the second process. In the next process, we have H3O plus and H2. So that's your final reaction. So the approach refers to where we are looking at and where we're we going forward to. So this is the process that we are looking at. Now, functional group transformations can also take other methods. So we can also use a two-step strategy to move from a position of a pi bond into an alkene. So where we are moving a pi bond here. So here is the motion of a pi bond so the pi bond is right here we want to move it to the carbons these two carbons so the first thing i'm going to do is addition reaction which results in the bromine getting added to the more substituted carbon and hydrogen so bromine gets added here the less substituted carbon gets hydrogen so the next one is elimination when you eliminate here this results in the double bond formation on the other side so where the HBr gets eliminated. So the first reaction we need a hydrogen and bromine to the chlorine. In the second reaction we do an E2 elimination. So the reagents that we choose depends on the Regis selectivity that we need. So remember that the Regis selectivity is the main point that we are looking at when you have synthesis reactions. Now so in this reaction the first one is HBr. The reagent is HBr so hydrogen and bromine get added to the compound so here there's hydrogen and here there's bromine next because we are looking at elimination reaction and the double bond so we want a Hoffman product so we want a Hoffman product so which means that we're going to end up having to use a, a complex alkene a complex base now 
this is the step the synthesis of the reaction in itself so a two step sequence is needed to convert an alkane into an alkene so when you want to calcify an alkane so the first thing that we do here is radical bromination where we add bromine the next step is elimination that results in a double bond formation here we are looking at a zeissier product so which means that here elimination occurs in a zeissier product so we're going to end up using a simple alkene simple base sorry so we're going to end up using for example NaOET next we would be able to convert a double bond to a single bond also or to a triple bond for example poison catalyst such as lindar catalyst lindar lindar catalyst can be used to produce a triple bond to a double bond if you want to further continue the reaction we can use hydrogen so catalytic hydrogenation to produce a double bond to a single bond next elimination results in the alkene formation right and presence of bromine and carbon tetrachloride and excess sodium amide causes it to form a triple bond so these are functional group transformations so this is basically the summary of all the reactions that we saw before in alkanes alkenes and alkynes next changing the carbon skeleton for some transformations we might need to necessarily tamper with the carbon skeleton itself which means that we might have to add or remove the carbons so when a synthesis requires the carbon skeleton to be altered so you need to able to recall the reactions that add or remove the carbons so most of the reactions learned so far only change a functional group or the change the location of it so for example here if you have four carbon structure and a three carbon structure we might need to form a seven carbon structure so we only have learned only one transformation that increases the number of carbons in a molecule so for the time being now we know that this reaction will not be used so we'll use that to add carbons so one of the main reactions that we change the alter the carbon structure is the process of ozonolysis so ozonolysis is addition adding ozone and dimethyl sulfide where it splits the alkene alkene so here it splits the double bond and forms oxides so oxides can be ketones oxides can be aldehydes so depending on the structure it can have the most common structure form is a double bond o and whatever is the side chain form that results in its proportional oxide so in this we will discuss many more reactions that can help in the future we'll discuss many more reactions but for now remember ozonolysis is our main process to split or change the alter the organic structure now how to approach a synthesis problem so the to approach any synthesis problem first answer main questions two main questions one is there a change in the carbon skeleton and is it gaining or losing carbons so second is there a change in the identity or the location of the functional group so solving a synthesis problem requires the recall of all the reactions learned and working through many examples so the more you work through examples the more it is easier to understand synthesis problems for example here they have given us a problem where they have asked us to convert this into this structure so let me copy it now what is the first step first step is there any change in the carbon skeleton so first first remember is there any change in the carbon skeleton so here we can say yes because notice that here you have 1 2 3 4 5 
and here you have one two three four five six seven so here you are converting from five carbons to seven carbons next second question is is it gaining or losing electrons sorry losing carbons here we can say yes it is gaining carbons so we have answered the first two questions so it is still gaining gain carbons so we are starting compound with five carbons and you're ending with a compound of seven carbons second is is there any structural change basically meaning that it's there any is there any identity change here we can say yes so we are converting an alkyne into an alkene so we are converting an alkyne into an alkene because notice that here we have a triple bond and we are converting it into a double bonded carbon so to synthesis we need to accomplish the following process one we have to convert the triple bond into a trans alkene second we need to convert we need to add the two additional carbons that must be installed so here notice that in this structure if you flip this structure it's a there is a structural change and is there a change in the radio selectivity here we are converting an alkyne into specifically a trans alkene so focus on three these two steps so what are the reagents that need that we need to accomplish these tasks number one we know that to convert a triple bond into so we need to first convert we need to add the number of carbons we need to add carbons adding carbons the only process that we know is to convert a terminal alkyne into an internal alkyne so the first thing is we are going to use sodium amide and ethyl iodide and we are going to convert a terminal carb terminal alkyne into an internal alkyne notice that here ch3 ch2i this is the part that is being added to the triple bond next dissolving it methyl reduction so converts it from alkynes to trans alkenes so, so this process in the presence of sodium and nh3 results in an alkene formation so where we are going to convert from an alkyne into an alkene specifically a trans alkene so here it's a two step process so in sense it's a three step process but you know we can consider it to be a two step process because we're only using two steps to convert into final product so these are the three reactions involved in converting an alkyne into an alkene a trans alkene so it is extremely important that we number the each reaction in the multi step synthesis because one two three refers to the sequence in which the reactions occur so merely listing all the reagents together is not sufficient next let's talk about another type of analysis called retrosynthetic analysis so the name itself says retrosynthetic which means that this approach we solve for the reaction in the reverse order so we begin by solving the last step in the synthesis first and then coming back to backward step so whenever you see this word retro it means backward so whenever you're retrofitting something it means that you're working backward or to see whether how it has originally started now again here also we need to ask the same two questions is the change is there a change in the carbon skeleton or is there a change in the functional group changing or moving next first step is to analyze the structure of the reactant and product and what are the functional groups that we are dealing with for example here in this compound we have oh group so that is changed to a triple bond so we have an oh group converting into a triple bond so the first step that we know is let's start with the first step is the is, is there any change in the carbon skeleton let's check the number of carbons so number one two three four five six 
one two three four five six so here also there's six carbons here also there's six carbons so there is no change in the number of scale carbon skeletons next is there a change in the identity yes because we are converting an alcohol into an alkyne but the note is that the position is not changed so wherever the alcohol was attached there itself is the triple bond so remember that concept now what are the reactions that we need to convert the process from an alcohol to an alkyne the first step is to look at the last step of the process so the last step involves looking at the last five we do not know the byproducts in the middle but we want to focus on mainly the last step the last step results in converting the alkyne so we are going to convert the alkyne into some sort of an an alkane with a substituted alkane because for it to bond with an OH group it needs to have something there in that point now the vicinal dihalide is the only one that we know how to make so because this is the only way that we can make that process so we can use that to start the process so the first thing we can do is we can take this alkyne and we want to convert it into a vicinal dihalide notice that we do not know how to use convert this and we do not know how this reaction works so this is the only thing that we know where we have two carbons two alkanes that are attached to the same card to the adjacent carbons so that is the vicinal dihalide next so we know that the reagent that is used is excess sodium amide and water so the first step is excess sodium amide converts it from an alkyne into an alkene and then adding water adds it add undergoes acid catalyzed hydration now so we know that we are converting this into bromine so we are adding two bromines here the next process is we can continue backwards again so we can use this and if it undergoes elimination it can form an alkene so which means that here we are going to add a dibromide to alkene so from adding br2 to alkene produces dibromide now we know that this process works so the second process is also done where we are going to use dibromide so in presence of ccl4 now we know that this is the alkene that we've used now we know that there is only one step to figure out because we already know all the steps notice that this is the less substituted carbon this is the more substituted carbon now what what reaction is there here that can does that so the, here we know that this is an addition reaction but here the addition reaction involves h and oh added in the reverse so which means that h is being added to the more substituted carbon and OH is being added to the less substituted carbon. So here, this refers to the first step again, which is we cannot remove, we cannot add OH directly. We cannot remove OH directly to form an alkene. So notice that this reaction if you look at the forward reaction, it's elimination if you look at it in the reverse it's addition now we want to know how to do this part of the reaction only we are looking at how to do this part of the reaction only now if you look at that part of the reaction only this part of the reaction only we want to know how to do that part of the reaction only so this we know that it's an elimination reaction but the problem is in elimination you notice that OH is not a good leaving group so which means there is a first step that involves removing OH in place of something else so this process involves first using TSCL and pyridine to make it into chlorine first and then using db or dbn to undergo elimination reaction so e2 reaction so first step is substitution 
the second step is heat elimination so these are the steps that are involved and these are the five steps that are involved in the multi-step process but remember that every step that we know we've already gone through this multiple times but we have gone through them separately now we are using them to work it out collectively in one simple sequence to ensure this is correct we should work out each reaction and make sure we have the correct rejoin stereoselectivity so next let's talk about green chemistry so green chemistry refers to the reactions that are more environmentally friendly and for guiding principles so here we are looking at to prevent waste and we are trying to use less hazardous substances and three we are trying to use safer solvents and four we are trying to maximize the atom economy so one and one and two are much easier so we want to prevent waste and use less hazardous substances. number three refers to only that are environmentally benign where they do not affect environmental com com compounds number four is maximizing at atom economy is to use reactions where all or most of the atoms from the reagents are incorporated into the products so let's take a simple example of two processes oxymercuration demercuration and acid, acid catalyzed hydration so we know that oxymercuration and demercuration everything that you see in red is a byproduct so the atoms in the red here are the waste material so which means that this results in a poor atom economy where there are too much waste materials here the only byproduct is h plus so because only h plus is the byproduct we can good be get this back into the reaction and let it continue into a catalytic amount so we do not need to use this every single time more and more so which means that this has good atom economy next the fifth step is to use catalyst rather than stoichiometric reagents number six is energy efficiency where reactions are performed at room temperature more and more efficiently than those requiring heat and number seven is renewable feedstocks meaning that we are trying to use sources such as grain or corn as a source of carbon as opposed to petroleum so increasing the proficiency the practical tips that we can use to build a molecule we must be able to choose the right tools for the job so it is helpful to organize the reactions as you learn them into two separate sets one is the set of reactions that can alter the carbon skeleton for example, reactions like ozonolysis, reactions that alter the functional groups, for example, things like nuclear substitution, elimination, and addition. These are examples of reactions that can alter the functional group. So as you learn more and more reactions, we can add them to the appropriate list. So a great way to practice synthesis is to design your own problem. So first process of designing your own synthesis problem is start with a relatively simple reactant compound. Next, choose a reaction, write out the reagents, then predict the structure of the product. And repeat the step a few more times. Take out all the intermediates and reagents so you don't need to give the answer away. And swap the problems with the classmate to practice more and more again. So try this problem and see if you can synthesize the product where we are starting with a triple bond and we are forming to add an addition reaction so here this is a reaction of trying to alter the carbon skeleton so this is an example that we have started with acetylene and we are going to end up with the final product is a cis alkene so we can use these processes and finally find out your reaction notice that if you use sodium ammonia you get a trans alkene if you use h2 and lindar's catalyst we get a cis alkene so these are the two reactions that we generally see here so this is where you can convert an acetylene into a cis alkene an alkyne into a cis alkene so this is how you can swap problems and try to create what are the reactions that we can create so try these at home and try to practice them so first thing is write down all the reactions that we have seen from the chapter of alkenes finally to the chapter of radical reactions and finally go through all the reactions once and try to synthesize your own compounds and see which processes that you can create and what are the processes that you can use to create your own compound so we will do much more examples in the later classes so in organic 2 but organic now ends with this chapter